Gamers, and welcome back to another War Games Delivered video. Be sure to visit us at wargamesdelivered.com to get the paints, miniatures, and supplies used in this video, and also to refer a friend. You guys will both get a $15 discount, and with that, let's get into the video. In this two-part video series, we'll be painting a Stark Outrider Cavalry model from a Song of Ice and Fire miniatures game, with this video being part two focusing on the rider. Starting out with Satchel Brown, which has become uh, one of my go-to's for Dark Brown, we'll use this to paint the stirrups of the saddle and the belt on the rider. And since we're working in some smaller detailed areas, uh, make sure you don't have too much paint on the brush to maintain good control over your paint. The less you have to clean up, the better. And if you do make any mistakes in between any of these steps, just be sure to recreate your base coat color with acrylic paints and clean up before fixing with the speed paint. Some of these darker speed paints really can stain other areas, so be mindful of that while you're painting with the speed paints. And moving right into the next step, we'll use Grim Black to fill in the boots of the mini. I also decided to use a thinned down version of this for his facial hair as well. And now we'll switch over to Bony Matter for all of the fur on the model, mainly on the back of the cloak and the edges of his gauntlets. We used this color on the uh, saddle in the previous video, so this step will tie those two areas together nicely. Uh, and you may have noticed ruddy fur in that previous shot. I actually used that to paint the belt of the model, uh, which is a very quick step. Uh, and then we'll move over into uh, Beowulf Blue for the cloak of the model here. This is a very nice deep blue uh, with a slight indigo tint to it. Um, this is perfect for darker blue theme on Stark units, but I actually will probably use this in the future on my Tully units. And with the cloak being a little bit of a uh, flatter, smoother surface, I decided to apply two thin layers of this paint just to make sure the cloak uh, had a bit of shading, had a little bit more even coverage, and uh, just more of a solid color. And this is one of the newer speed paints that really benefits from using your brush to really place the shadows with a bit of excess paint before it dries. And now we'll be moving on to one of the larger steps of this video, switching over to Broadsword Silver for all of the silver details on the model, picking out his shield, his helmet, the sword, and his armor here with this color. And by the way, if you're interested in trying out any of these paints for yourself, we have a pre-order for the Speed Paint 2.0 Mega Set linked in the description below near the paint list. And while you're there, be sure to refer a friend and get a quick $15 discount for yourself and your friend before you order. When working with the metallic speed paints here, you'll want to be a bit more careful around the other colors because uh, these paints can add metallic flakes on areas that you don't intend them for. And uh, we'll be highlighting this with another metallic, so keep that in mind with this step. Uh, think of this as like a base coat step for uh, all of your silver metallics. I did switch over to a smaller brush uh, just to get some of the uh, harder to reach areas like the chainmail on his leg behind his shield. This will help with keeping good brush control and minimize making mistakes at the cost of possibly having to do two coats instead of one. Moving right into our next metallic, we'll switch over to Hoplite Gold for the hilt of the sword and rings on his breastplate. This will give us a nice bit of variation between metallics. I had almost forgot to paint the face, so real quick we're going to use Peachy Flesh on the face, the mouth, and his hands here. You can be a bit more generous with this speed paint than others because it tends to dry lighter than it looks on the palette. We are also starting our Instagram story contest soon, so be sure to follow us there and send us your entries for a chance to win more prizes.
And finally, for our last step, we're going to do a controlled dry brush highlight over all of the prominent metallic areas using plate nail metal uh, from the normal metallic line. Be sure to use a small dry brush for this and don't be afraid to add more paint to the brush. With more controlled dry brush areas like this, I like to refill my brush about three times. Uh, and for a quick and detailed paint scheme, I was very pleased with the results here. I'm sure you could add a lot more detail with a few more acrylic highlights over the speed paints. And I plan on trying to do that in a few videos in the future. After finishing the base and uh, varnishing the mini, this guy is ready to ride down the infantry in an epic charge. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more tutorials. And also be sure to check out the top link in the description for the giveaway attached to this video. Thanks again guys and happy wargaming.